Yo, what's up? So my goal today is to expand your mind and get the gears turning in the world of synthesis modulation. We'll be recreating this sound that I heard in my head before I fell asleep last night. Rest in peace, Sakamoto. can this sound teach you so much about mod matrices, LFOs, and the power of cross modulation, but the skill required to friend impression ratio is off the charts with this one. We'll go in three easy steps from cool to dope to Lord have mercy on our souls. So buckle up. I'll be doing this on the Novation Peak, but know that you can do this on basically any synthesizer, especially VSTs on the computer, since Anything on the computer is way more powerful than any of these paperweights. But the reason I'm gonna be using Peak is that it's a great visual aid to kind of see what's going on within the patch and it's so much more fun to use. All right, let's get into it. So step number one, we're gonna utilize LFO1 with its fade time as well as its repeats. And I know I can just use LFO1 here, which is on the panel, directly normal to the filter frequency, but for the sake of being able to kind of see everything and how it's moving, we're just gonna to stick to the mod matrix. So we got two sources. In this case, we're just gonna utilize one, and our source is gonna be LFO1. You can think of it as like a little robot, right? We wanna set up a robot to do this for us. So mod matrix, LFO1, do this for us to what? to what's the destination, our filter frequency. Now, we'll turn that up a little bit and we'll play a note. Now, you can hear and see that this little LED is what's moving this filter frequency cutoff for us. If I speed this up. But we're gonna utilize the sawtooth and this is gonna give us a bit more edge to the sound. Right, pretty cool. Speed it up a little more. Not bad. Utilize fade time. What fade time is really doing, in a sense, is just opening up this depth amount. And depth is saying how much of LFO1 is affecting the filter frequency. This fade time, you can kind of think of it as a volume knob on the LFO, and it's slowly turning up the volume to full. Because if it's all the way up, it's gonna take a long time for LFO1's volume, which in a sense is affecting filter frequency once cut off, to affect it. Right, but once it goes to full, it's just going on forever. Now the next thing I wanna utilize is repeats because this can kind of give us this cool dynamic playable sound. So jumping over to our LFO menu, we'll go to LFO one and we'll go to repeats and set this to, I don't know, let's just do 14, sure. So it's gonna fade up, play 14 of those and then stop, pretty dope. And if you play your notes kind of staggered, they'll all kind of fall apart. And if you don't like that, they're all independent, right? You can set your LFO to common. And what this is gonna do is no matter how I play notes, it's gonna act as one giant LFO. But every time I play a new note, it's gonna restart the repeats for all of the notes. What's happening here is that even though it says LFO one and LFO two, Every single voice of this synthesizer, in this case, the eight voices, all have their own independent LFO. And LFO common is locking all of those LFOs together and making them move in tandem as one common giant LFO. Very similar to like the LFO in a Juno 106. It's just one big wave across all the voices. It's not each individual wave. Personally, I don't like that. I'm gonna turn that off so that if I do play something, They all repeat it on their own. And if I play a new note, it's just that note. That has its LFO repeat, not all of the notes. All right, pretty cool, right? Not too bad, but we can easily take this to a whole nother level with step number two, which is utilizing LFO number two. And oh, by the way, if you've been eyeballing the see you later oscillator hats, they're actually mine. I sell them linked down below. So utilizing LFO number two, we're gonna move LFO one's rate for us. And the goal, the sound that we wanna create is this. I'm gonna manually do it and then show you how we can have it 
do it itself while we play the keys. I want the rate to start off fast, especially with no fade time, you could really hear it. Yeah, that's what I want. Right? Super simple to do. I'm telling you, watch this. Mod slot two. You have a bunch of different mod slots in your mod matrix. We're just utilizing mod slot one, which is LFO to the filter frequency. Mod slot two, what do we want to happen? We want LFO two positive to go to LFO one's rate. Really simple, turn that up. Now, check this out. Okay, not bad. Kind of cool, but a little funky, not too controlled, right? Reason being is LFO2 is at a free sync rate. It's just kind of running wild, doing its own thing across all the eight voices. And on top of that, we have it in a triangle shape here, which means it's just going up and down, up and down. But if I want the rate to start off fast and then end slow, we need to utilize the sawtooth again. So watch this. Okay, we're getting closer, but we're still not there. Reason being, you go to your LFO menu, LFO2, our phase is set to free. They're all running wild, but if I just set this to zero, this is also known as a key sync for your LFO, which means synchronize the LFO to every time I hit a key. Every time I hit a key, it's gonna restart the LFO from the very top point of its phase. In this case, at the top of this sawtooth shape. So now listen. Pretty cool. Let's make it even more drastic. Maybe a little less. Okay, we're almost there, but now is the next problem. Why does it keep repeating? Because we don't have a set repeat amount. Check this. We're gonna go to repeats and just set it to one. We just want it to go from the top to the bottom, then stop. Oh, still one more in there. That's okay. You can go ahead and then fine tune your repeats. In this case, maybe we just want 10. Did I nail that? Was it really 10? No way. It was totally 10. Holy crap, that's tight. All right. Now let's utilize some phase time. A little reverb on here. And this is just step two. Wait till step three. Another fun thing is we have a fade time for LFO2. And in the same sense, it's going to kind of whip the rate up a little bit. Check this out. You almost think of it as an attack, right? Similar to the volume that I was saying, and it's turning the volume up. It's almost like an attack cycle on an envelope towards the LFO's volume. So listen to this now. You hear that? Speed up a little bit and then slow down. Maybe a little less. I'm holding down, I'm not playing multiple notes, I'm literally just holding this down. And you get these beautiful repeating cycles. Now, sustain pedal on. If you want a little less of this bow, 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 you can just go and turn down the depth of how much the LFO one is going to your filter cutoff. We'll lower it down just a little bit, maybe just 20. Let's see what that sounds like. All right, we'll just turn our filter up a little bit. This sounds dope, but this is gonna sound so sick. This is what I heard in my head. Now that we have this patch going, right? LFO one's moving the rate of the filter frequency, but only a certain amount, 10 times. LFO two's whipping the speed of LFO one down into this slower movement. Bum, 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 bum. We're gonna utilize the keyboard as a mod source, which is one of my favorite things to do. So we're gonna find keyboard. And we're gonna send this to LFO1's rate as well. Now, by turning this up, 
This means that higher notes will have a faster LFO1 rate and lower notes will have a slower rate. Best to hear it in practice. Watch, we'll really crank this up. The higher I go, the faster it is, especially with these fade times down. And then the low notes. Move it really slow. Utilize a little bit of fade time, then play this in with a chord. Okay, whoa, hold on, way too much depth. We want subtlety, that's where we live, right? Oh, listen to that movement. Turn the filter frequency up. We'll slow down the rate of LFO1. A little bit of release on there, mask up the uh, chord changes. You see where this is going? You can start moving this patch around, especially really subtly by, for example, moving the rate a little slower. A little less fade time on two, a little faster rate on one. Oh, I knew that there was a few more in there. And same thing, fine tune it, right? How much is LFO2 moving LFO1's rate? Maybe not that much, but just enough to push them off of one another, right? Let's try that chord uh, sequence again. Ah, not that much moving, a little faster, fine tune. A little faster. Oh, that's the move. A little chorus. Okay, let's take this even one step further. We're here, we're in it to win it. Let's go and really shape up this sound. Let's say, for example, these high notes, they're bugging us, they're a little too high pitch, right? But we want the low notes to really shine and be a little more open, but not the high notes. We can utilize keyboard tracking, but in the inverse. We'll jump over to mod slot four. This is empty. Keyboard tracking again. Destination, filter cutoff, or filter frequency, but negatively. So we'll go even higher and I'll move this halfway down. All right, if I turn this all the way up, you can already hear. Look, it's opening up the filter as we move this around. So high notes now are gone, but listen to the low note chord. It's open, right? Especially if you open this up. And if we play the same chord, but three octaves higher, the filter's a lot more subdued. Again, utilize this in subtle ways. And now you got a more playable, movable patch because the higher notes you go, the less obvious they are, even though they move a lot faster. And in LFO1, we're gonna change our repeats to about 20, just to give us a little bit more room to play with. And same thing, let's go ahead and play some chords. See, they're way less obvious. If I were to go to our mod matrix and turn this up, or just have it be normal, and do the similar little chord progression. Those are really quiet. Right, maybe you like this. Personally, I want them a little quieter. There we go, that's good for me right there. And I love how they just twinkle a little bit and then they're gone. Turn the fade time up on two. Turn that 
chorus way up. There's a little bit more delay on here. Let's go into oscillator drift. Get it really pretty. Again, if you don't want that to be as obvious, go back here, lower it. So it's just a little pluck, a little bit of movement. That's all we need, right? That's what creates the patch. A little more drift. Let's try that again. Oh, you hear this? Sustain all the way up. Let's go full level on here. Overdrive. Pre-filter. This is where the meat's at. Ooh, chorus down. Effects tight. Parallel. Delay into reverb into the chorus. I actually want to go delay into chorus into reverb. No delay. It's hitting it hard. Push it. Push it. A little faster. Let's go some more repeats on there. key tracking. Let it shine. Mm. Listen to the sound. sticks around to the longest still going like the heartbeat do you understand what I'm saying this is this is all I needed just a little bit of that movement to kind of keep things a little wishy-washy not to get too wild now but I really hope you learned something here today. This is the sound I was trying to make. This weird key tracked LFO moving. Higher notes make it just trip out. Then you take the mod and the keyboard filter frequency. And then you jump this up. You know what I'm saying? Do you hear it? I hear it. Maybe that's all that matters. Listen to this. Anyway, before we get too lost in the sauce, my friend, I appreciate you coming by as always. Hopefully you learned something here today in this wild... Listen to this. I don't even know what's happening right now. Calm yourself. In this wild head of mine of hearing this sound where I wanted, you know, the higher notes to move fast and then the low notes to take their time. Anyway, I appreciate you, my friend. Until next week. You already know the drill. Share the love. Share the knowledge. Knowledge is power. Peace.